Hi. <laughs> I wasn't gonna come through. I was gonna keep sleeping because it was late. But it's Mardi Gras. Like, how could you be asleep? What up? What up, Soraya? What up, Cornbread? What up, X Men? What up, Manda? Yes, Night Owls. Yes. Thank you, Clifford. Y'all are so cute. Well, I wanted to come through because I've had some reflective moments on Beyonce. And they are, bitch, I was right. Bitch, everybody's saying what the fuck I already said, but they trying to be nice about it. Bitch, I don't care. <laughs> Like, that's how I feel. I deadass feel like all these articles coming out, they saying everything I said, but they're not going to get dragged because they're educated ass Negroes. I'm telling you, that's how this shit works. A nigga come through pontificating on the periscope and then niggas be like, hmm, critical analysis. Hmm, mining it. I already knew it was going to be that. I already knew. What up? What up, Sauce Queen? It's just annoying, yo. It's just annoying. Exactly. Australia living like they like come for her, but like they like they gather her like it's like they gather the ponytail, but they never apply the pinche. Okay. They never put the fucking ponytail holder in place. They never get it together. They'll pull it up, they'll you know. But they'll never put it up. And that's what kills me. But it's fine because I'm just validated in myself. I knew that what I was saying wasn't bullshit. It's like, I, yes, I'm high, but fuck. I ain't that goddamn high. Like, I, like, honestly, like, how high could I have been to be sitting there not only pontificating, like, educationally, but I was also keeping it light. Nigga, you gotta have mad modes to do that. Motherfuckers don't understand uh, fucking the multiplicities and the motherfucking multiverse. They don't understand all the planes that niggas can exist on. So that's fine. Sleep on me, bitch. That's okay. That's okay. But I'll tell you this. It just feels good to know that, like, I wasn't tripping. Because I'm like, hold up. Like, I know when people write their essays, like, they're not, that, like, I know that people can't leave this out of the critique. Like, it's real. And, like, it just kind of bothers me. But I feel like at the end of the day, it's like, I know I wasn't silencing folks. I know I wasn't, like, you know, popping off and being hella fucking shady and being like, oh, like, Beyonce's, li like, I think, like, my main critique was, and something, someone brought this up, but someone was saying how, like, they're, like, when I was talking about, like, family, like, familial heritages and shit, um, and folks were saying, like, oh, yeah, like, their parents have, like, this heritage or whatever, um, I mean, that's fine, I mean, the beehive was wild, but I, it's, like, I mean, I don't know, it's, like, it weighs, it's just, like, there's, like, I don't know, like, I've just, I've heard worse from better, you know what I mean, it's, like, I've been dragged by the best, so I just feel, like, in ways, you know, after after all the drags, it's like, if you're going to come at me for being a fat bitch, if you're going to come at me for being trans, if you're going to come at me for fucking smoking weed to fucking mitigate my motherfucking anxiety, like, if you're going to fucking come at me, like, for fucking ableist ass fucking things, for, like, oppressive ass fucking things, then that's where the fuck you're coming from. That's where the fuck you're coming That's you, bitch. That's not me. But, like, it just irks me that folks are really trying to say that I have, like, some light skin guilt. And that's why I was dragging Beyonce. Like, that is, like, that is the that is the farthest reach I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, damn, like, you think, like, because I, I like, what? And my thing is this. If I wanted to be, quote, unquote, down so bad, wouldn't I be, like, motherfucking, like, just fucking going along with everybody else? Like, I just feel like I would have just been, like, Yes, Beyonce. like I feel like I would have been like quote unquote overcompensating and being like, come through Beyonce. Yeah, slay New Orleans. It's like I'm a transplant, but I ain't no fucking fool. Like I I don't claim New Orleans. Like have, have y'all ever heard? Have y'all ever heard me claim New Orleans? I never have. It's like yo, I feel like I'd be respectful, but it's just like damn. It's like I don't know. It's like what does it look like to go hard for the city that like you're you're in but then also i seen another person write something that got od notes talking about i see transplants talking about beyonce and talking about how transplants are only here because they're exploiting the housing market post katrina and i was like wow 
And it just made me think about my journey to New Orleans and how I wasn't on no fake healer shit. How, like, when I first came to New Orleans, I dead ass was, like, trying to, like, just figure out, like, how to get out of the life I was in. Like, I never explained, like, you know, how I transitioned from, like, leaving Boston to New Orleans. But if I can be 100% candid with you, I was involved in a very bad relationship. It was very violent. It was very traumatic. It was very fucking racist. And it was a situation where I kind of felt like, I had attempted to get away from this person for so many, you know, years, you know, off and on, off and on, that it felt like I had to do something dr drastic to get away from them. It felt like I had to kind of like, I'm, oh, I'm going to read. What? Goodbye, dear. Goodbye. But um, I feel like I wasn't like, I'm trying to read. Olivia, I don't care. Let's see, but Olivia, the thing is, why do you think I have to care about what you have to say? You know what I mean? It's a very interesting dynamic. It's like folks will like catch your beat and then be like, no offense, but I don't give a fuck what you say. And it's like, but you're still here. It's like, you're still fucking here. It's like, clearly you want some sort of respect. Like clearly you want me to respect you, and but you don't want to respect me. Like it seems like the ways that people come at you is like, bitch, do you really want me to treat you the way you're treating me? You probably don't, but it's like, it's fine. It's like, cause Olivia, it's not about you like that's okay pop up live your life I don't give a shit but what I'm trying to say is like fuck what was I just saying oh yeah um talking about how like I, I'm like I'm in a fucking domestically abusive ass relationship I'm feeling like I can't motherfucking get free out of this shit I'm feeling like I have trauma like around like housing and like being like in the foster care system from like ages like all honestly from like age like eight to like fucking like around eight to like 12 there and then the case got closed and the case got reopened when I was 13 and when it got reopened I was in foster care and then from there it became a situation where you know I'm in college I meet a person we're dating I'm living with them or rather we're living together and then I'm definitely living with them because like my scholarship runs out I don't have money to be paying my rent my rent was like fifteen hundred dollars per month how sway like the scholarship was catching was was like catching a nigga and I was like I had no idea I had no concept of rent I had no concept of like bills like my scholarship was handling that ass and then when my scholarship got cut I was like wow well you know, I guess like, you know, I'm gonna keep working this job I'm working. I'm gonna quit school because I can't really afford that. And like my partner kind of like went kind of OD with the controlling this because it's like I no longer had that outlet. Like I feel like I had school. I had like, I guess I was on YouTube a little bit, but it's like I had school and I had work and I had my partner. It's like when I didn't have school no more and it was just my partner and work, it just seemed like so much. And like, we were just like fighting with each other. We were not getting along. There were just so many factors. And so like, when I actually got to a point where I was like, I can't take this shit no more. I can't be, uh, Olivia, I'm just gonna kick you out cause I don't care. Um, but when I finally felt like I like felt okay enough or like stable enough to like try to get away from the situation I was in when I started stacking my money like I started saving up all the money that I was making from YouTube I was making like maybe like $200 like $150 like I was putting that shit away because I was like I need to get away from this motherfucker like I need to get the fuck out of here so I'm tripping and like I finally like go on I'm like going on Craigslist I'm looking up places y'all at one point I don't know who was following me at this time but I was I was posting about the shit on Tumblr I was like yo I was like I sent out a fucking job application to work in Santorini, which is an island in Greece. I fucking, I, or rather outside of Greece, I fucking applied to go to work at a youth hostel in motherfucking um, South America, bitch. I can't even remember where the fuck I was trying to go, but I seen like an application for that and I was like, fine, I'm gonna fuck with it because I was already working in a youth hostel. So I hit up two youth hostels and then I also hit up this hostel in New Orleans and the the Santorini one was like we're gonna keep you on file but we already fought we already um you know got our people for this this amount of time so like we can't do anything for you but they were just like but we can keep you on file and all this shit and I was like fuck that and then the people that were like in South America they were telling me some shit about I would have to do a border run because of, because um they they need somebody right away and I was talking about getting a visa they were like you don't have any time and it was just sounding kind of like 
a lot and it sounded kind of sketchy so I was like you know what I'm not gonna fuck with this and then I did a Skype interview literally I did a Skype interview and three days later I was in New Orleans it wasn't a situation where I was like researching where I was gonna go it wasn't a situation where I was like yeah Mardi Gras that was not ever happening I was just like I need to get the fuck out of my life like my life is fucking crazy like I'm not fulfilled my partner is like not who I want to be with anymore and I really don't have like the familial support to be like I'm gonna go live with my family because I tried that shit and it didn't work it was more traumatic than living with the white it was it was more traumatic living in my familial home than living with a white fucking abuser like take that shit all in and then I go to fucking New Orleans and I'm like living there and I'm living with these two white people and I'm just like trying to fucking like live I have one day off a week I'm working every fucking day I'm like trying to get my money together and I'm literally just trying to like understand what it means to be living like on your own without any like partner without any family living like in the south for the first time not with family or not with someone that was my guardian it was like living somewhere where I kind of felt like yes I am seeing more representation of black folks but at the same time I really didn't have any understanding of the complexities I think of like the city where I was living like where I lived I didn't I barely saw any niggas where I lived I was living uptown as fuck so I just feel like I just feel like in situations like that where it was like, I don't know, just like hearing people try to talk about gentrifiers and talking about fucking um, post-Katrina transplants. It's like, bitch, I didn't come to Katrina. I didn't come to New Orleans to be like fucking eating off the motherfucking remains of Katrina and the lack of motherfucking government support. I did not motherfucking come here to do that shit. And I just feel like the ways that people talk about transplants, the way that people talk about gentrifiers, there's no motherfucking intersections there. Like, folks don't talk about people who, like, really had no other options. People don't talk about people who literally had no fucking idea where to go, what to do. It's like, I'm not trying to say that my, my trauma is more important than, like, a person who's from here who's gone through trauma. I would never posit that. But I feel like, in ways, it's like... Folks were so pressed to figure out how they could dismiss me that they just like fucking triggered the fuck out of me and just like made me out to be some sort of anti-black fucking fucking crackhead like real talk on some ableist shit like on some you're a high ass bitch who's fucking light skin and because you're light skin and you want so badly to be black because you're light skin therefore you're not black like that's like I just felt like there were so many intersections of shadiness happening and I was just sitting back like wow all this for Beyonce okay and I think the weirdest part is like the one of the people that threw me away is like a dark skin like parent who was like poor as fuck, like trying to start her YouTube career. And I'm like, bitch, you hold Beyonce, you hold Beyonce over me? You hold Beyonce over me on some like, me having an analysis? It's just like, I swear to God, like people do not understand like the complexities of being woke and being fucking poor. They don't understand what it means to like really be having to like live on the ground fuck critical race theory like people don't understand like what it means to like have to like live every day in this fucking body and like have these thoughts and like have this motherfucking analysis running day after day after day and having to interact with people who have no fucking idea what the fuck you're talking about that shit is fucking hard so it's like when I'm when I'm coming through on Periscope and I'm talking to people who can understand what I'm saying like I said wokeness be so exclusive y'all I swear to god like you started you trying to talk and people who are more woke than you, more academic than you, their pussy sits on College Hill, they really get to fucking be the ones that actually, like, go hard and critique shit. That's what irks me. It's like, folks, like, there's so many levels of exclusivity and wokeness. It's just fucking gross. Oh, my God. Yo, and also, I want to say this Color Lines essay that I read that kind of gave me life. Um, it was just like, they had said, they were talking about Creole. And it was really interesting to me how they said they talked to three generations of Creoles and was talking about how Creole is very much predicated on light-skinnedness or being a quote-unquote pretty color and having uh, good hair. And, you know, I just feel like in ways like for folks to like, you know, be caping so hard for Beyonce to include her Creole history in a jam that's clearly using like blackity black motherfucking like representation like when they're talking about stop killing us when they're using like young black boys like as steppers in front of motherfucking police like it's just interesting to me I mean I feel like 
I fuck with Gazi because I feel like in ways like Gazi was someone that I identify with because he had like opportunities where white people was trying to use him and I totally had that experience like early on in my like YouTube life where like there were so many people trying to use me and trying to like make me out to be like their little spokesperson or some shit. And some of the shit that, like, people would try to get me to market, I would be like, bitch, do you even know who I am? Like, do you even know? Like, not on some, like, I'm better than you, but, like, on some, like, do you even know, like, how people even fucking found my shit? Like, they found my shit because I love me. I can't be doing no shit that's not going to be about love, about not loving me. Like, people, like, I remember, like, one time it was this motherfucking weight loss uh, fucking supplement, and they were talking about they were going to pay me, like, they were, they were telling me that they were going to pay me $2,000 to lose 100 pounds and to say that it was their motherfucking product. And I just, like, deleted the email and just, like, moved on with my life. Because I was like, bitch, I was like, who the fuck, like, who does that? Like, but low-key, Rosie Mercado. <laughs> but it's like, that's the thing, like, people be, people really do exploit fatness. Like, it's so weird. I agree. I mean, I just feel like it's not in my character to be like, oh, y'all, let's talk about weight loss. You know what I mean? Like, that's not where I'm coming from. If anything, I'm telling you to eat mama. If anything, I'm telling you, get your numbers up. Fuck out of here. Three digit hoes. <laughs> well, thank you. See, that's what I'm saying. They was trying to give me $2,000 talking about we need you to lose 100 pounds. I was like, do I get the money after? I was like, hold on. You know, I'm a scammer. I was like, hold on. I was like, oh, can I get the money up front? I was like, I got halfway up front. Because <laughs> I was like, bitch. I was like, I'm about to buy hella candies and snacks and shit like that with all that fucking $1,000. Like, y'all got y'all got $2,000 to just throw away on a, bitch, on a bitch losing weight? Hell no. Give me that money right now, bitch. I put it to good use. <laughs> I'm so sick of people out here doing that shit. Doing that, like, fucking fat hating. Exactly, bitch. I would have mad cans of tuna fish, bitch. I would have bread in the freezer. Okay, I would have it all. I would have butter. I would have toilet paper. I would have fucking uh, trash bags. All types of things. Exactly. Exactly. But they told me that I couldn't get the money until I lost the weight. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> I just, I was like, all right, well, bye. <laughs> you know what, though? Here's my thing. I feel like Gazi, Gazi's wokeness is being documented. So I feel like in ways, like, just like my wokeness is documented, so is Gazi. So I feel like in ways, like, Folks aren't living this shit, you know what I mean? Like, some people treat their YouTube like it's a series, and they really do have a channel. Some people are really out here making entertainment. Some people just simply use this shit as a way to fucking outlet all the, all the trauma. I feel like that's some of these black folks out here, you know, they're actually getting into this YouTube. That's why I try to urge my black folks, get on YouTube, bitch, make this coin, make this black pain fucking twerk for you, bitch. If you could talk about it, if you could talk about what the fuck you go through, we, like, people, people are interested in our stories. I'm telling you, people's really interested in our stories. Be the content creator. Be the one that tells your story and get that fucking money. That's where I'm coming from. Because I know this motherfucker's stealing from me all the time, bitch. At least I have a document of it. At least if you catch some shit that I already said or I already fucking did put, put on in their shit, I could get credit for it. Fuck it. Like, I'm going to be out here. If people going to steal from the broke niggas, that's woke niggas, then I'm going to get my fucking coin. And that's where the fuck I'm coming from. Exactly, cunt quat. I'm dead, Dana Grace. You're dumb. But it's deeper than that, though. It's like, people really do steal from poor people. Like, people really do steal from us. Like, it's it's really ironic because for people that don't have shit, like, we stay getting robbed. Like, real talk. Like, that's how I really feel about this about this Beyonce shit. If, I, if you want to be real, I feel like I got hot sauce in my bag. I feel like that is such a reference to, like, 
so many like slapstick black comedies where they have like the black ratchet and, and like she had hot sauce in her bag or some ranch in her bag. And I just feel like this is a song for like black femme people, especially in New Orleans, um, especially black women in New Orleans to like dance and crump to and feel like, yes, like this is some of our flavor. You know what I mean? But you know, it's like, it's like, yo, I want to say this too. Like I had some, I had like these two black girls come into the store and they was like wilding, like they was loving Beyonce because I was playing formation. Like the thing is, yes, I can critique Beyonce and I can still like Beyonce. I didn't say I hated the song. I never said I didn't fuck with I said I didn't fuck with the video. I said I didn't fuck with the Katrina, the Katrina porn. That's what I said. Um, but I was playing formation in the store and literally every time I play formation in the store, I get a black person, primarily black women, or or black queer uh queer like men perceived people you know crumping dancing jamming loving it and getting their life and it's just interesting to me how music really does like you know speak to people it's like some of the people that come into the store when I be playing the music like when I was playing anti I was playing anti all day people came into the store off anti you know what I mean so it's just like damn it's like black music is so motherfucking real um and so fucking I don't want to say seductive because I feel like that low-key has some like like racist ass undertones but I want to say that it is like it has an appeal that I feel like is very fetishistic and I feel like in ways like when people do hear you know bl blackness they hear audible blackness they hear sonic blackness like they want to partake in that shit so I feel like a lot of the folks that came in to listen to Formation like these two black girls from fucking New York, bitch, they had me play Formation five fucking times. They told me to rewind it every time it was going off and I wasn't mad at them. I was like, that is real. Like, I feel like, I, I feel like it's a very real thing that I could like come out 30 minutes after the video and like say my piece and still be promoting the music, still be putting the song out, especially like, like I feel like low key, I'm a hat DJ. I, the hats, they sell themselves. I make the vibe, baby. I make the vibe. So that's what I do in a shop. I just keep it real cute in there. I play it like it's a club. Because everybody drunk anyway. It's like, don't you want to shake your ass while you putting a cute hat on? Why not? But anyways, like fucking... These girls wanted me to play Beyonce. I played it. And they ha and like the whole time they're listening to the music, they're having critical analysis at the same damn time. Like that's what was killing me too. It's like, yo, it's like niggas do not want to give us the multiplicities. They don't want to give it to us. They don't want to believe that we could be woke and that we could perhaps not be sleep, but like be kind of letting shit slide, I guess. You know what I mean? We exist in many ways. So like everything that we do is valid as people. I feel like I don't, I feel like I'm never like telling a black person no stop that like get out of here like no. I'm never saying that I'm just saying hmm hmm perhaps seemingly I'm just giving my fucking analysis and then another thing I was thinking was bitch I'm broke so it's like how the fuck did my did my critique irk you I'm not on TV I'm not even a sponsor blog I am one bitch powered by one bitch's power saying how the fuck I fucking feel but like I don't know the way that the way that folks came at me. You would have thought I had a bullhorn. I was in the street like, "Fuck Beyonce, fuck Beyonce." Like you would have thought I was really like, "Kill her, drag her." <laughs> like that never happened. But people be wildin'. I mean, I just think like that's the power of it all. You know what I mean? That's the power of it all. Like I feel like. I mean, she didn't, she, I don't think she would ever would have put Black Lives Matter. She was going to, she wrote, she didn't, see, that's the other thing I want to say. People say, like, that, that her video conveyed all these messages, right? But when people cite, like, her, like, acknowledging all this shit in New Orleans, like, I'm like, okay, but, like, you're using Messy Maya. You're using motherfucking uh, Big Frida to convey what you want. Like, Beyonce's not saying... I ain't here for you hoes. I like cornbread and collard greens, bitch. She's not saying that. I just think that's interesting. Like, I just want to peep the ways that, like, Beyonce uses, like, sound bites. You know what I mean? And the ways that she doesn't have to say shit. She uses other people to say shit for her. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wildin'. And then also, like, her Super Bowl outfit. 
am I crazy? But I, it was giving me Michael Jackson tease. And so it was like, okay, so you're just like Mike, but then everybody else around you is a Black Panther with the afros and you got the straight blonde. I don't know. I just feel like we got to be mindful because it's like when people drag Rachel Dolls, y'all, it wasn't just that she was white. I think it was also the fact that, that people peeped how she used light-skinnedness as a tool to not only like get to her positions, but get coined and actually push herself. So I feel like when we talk about, you know, a, a light-skinned, like, Creole identifying black woman like leading the fucking the fucking radical black movement is just laughable and I don't mean no shade it's just like I think I'm just in the midst of like being disposed and I'm like wow like people really think Beyonce will ride harder for them than like me or than like other folks who have ridden hard for like so many people and it's like damn I don't know. I just feel like shit is wildin'. But I said the shit and I feel great. I feel like Ray J like I said it first. I said it first. Kunti Kinte, I feel like I can't make that I can't make that statement. I feel like I don't know who Beyonce would be if she wasn't Beyonce. But I will say that I feel like from all that I know, from all that I've seen, including her song Creole, because I feel like I just heard the song, I didn't know it was real, and I was like, wow, Beyonce really made a song called Creole. That's very interesting to me. I didn't know that was a real thing. But I'm just like, damn, like, I don't know. I don't know. And But I also wonder, you know, my I have a new critique. All of a sudden, I'm like, how is Beyonce not being critiqued for light skin guilt? You know what I mean? It's like, isn't it kind of interesting that she will pop out all of a sudden on her newest album, finally addressing like all the anti-black slander on her daughter? It's like, bitch, you could have been le released a statement. You had to write an album or maybe not even an album. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I want to know what the album sound like. And then also, do you know that she don't even got New Orleans on her tour list, y'all? No shade. There's a million critiques you could have. I feel like they're all motherfucking valid. I'm dead ador I'm dead adore me. I just I was just dying when I listened to the song because it said because it was like red bones, all my red bones. It said all my yellow bones, all my red bones, all my brown bones. Creole, Creole. I just couldn't. Dead. I feel like, yo, but can I tell y'all? I feel like I really do love the new Rihanna album. Like, I low-key want to buy it. Like, I'm at a point where I feel like a fool. Because I low-key was trying to shade it at first because I couldn't get it. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm big enough to admit when I'm shady. I'm big enough to admit when I'm, like, wrong as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, I understand. Like, I feel like when I when I popped off, I was just being a salty-ass hater, bitch. Because I was like, damn, I can't even find the album. Every Everywhere I went on YouTube. Yo, yes, I did. Yes, I, yes. Yes. Yes, I heard it all. I just want to be honest. I oh no, I know that I know that Rihanna has made some bad some some mistakes, you know what I mean? And I feel like I still love her too. Don't what? I thought the speaker was gonna work and I was trying to listen to Rihanna during my periscope, honestly. I'm like addicted to this song called Consideration. Like I can't, it's like stuck in my head. And then also same old mistake, it's stuck in my fucking head. Never ending. Oh my god. I love you, babe. Babe, go make this money. Go beat those faces. You look beautiful as fuck. Yes, you do. You the baddest boosh. Okay, but I need you to help me find a lighter. I don't know where the purple one is. I feel like I lost that one too. I feel like I had the purple lighter to start my life. And then it, it's gone now. I feel like 
I've never dragged Rihanna. Like I feel like I, but I feel like my, I feel like I never dragged Rihanna. Not because I didn't want to, just because I feel like I wasn't a fan until right now. Like I feel like I, I was a fan, but I feel like I care now. If that makes sense. Like now I care. I feel like I, I'm not gonna lie to you. I wasn't sure if Rihanna was gonna make it. I'm not trying to be shady, but I feel like we see a lot of people come. We see a lot of people go, and I feel like. Look at Liana Lewis, you know what I mean? Bleeding Heart Baby or whatever that song was. That was ter it was a terrible song, but a lot of people listened to it. And so I, I wasn't sure if she was going to leave either. Lumi D. They literally had only clap tracks and uh-oh. That's all they had. But look, that's fine. Nina Sky, Lumi D. I'm gonna say this, y'all gonna be mad, but Lil Mo, like, I have trust issues because Lil Mo, she was in too many songs that have just abruptly disappeared like that. It didn't really make any sense to me. It kind of freaked me out when she left. Fucking Trina. Ja Rule and Trina, what would I be without you? Like, come on now. Like, like my thing is like, what happened to the 90s, bruh? Like, when, yo, when's the last time we had a song where we had a bitch singing motherfucking the harmonies and another bitch just like, fuck it, like a bitch ad-lib singing and a bitch just singing and a nigga rapping? That is not even happening no more. We used to be blessed. We used to have a little bit of everything in the music, you know what I mean? Can we talk about old music and shit? I wanna, I'm, I'm feeling like it. Bitch, do you remember the motherfucking outfits in Pastor Cavassier? Like, that shit was so dope to me. But peep the massage noir though. When motherfucking Diddy stomped on uh, motherfucking Monique's foot. That shit pissed me off to this day. I be thinking about that low key to, for the rest of my life. How, like, Monika had her foot get hypothetically stomped in some nice-ass fucking wingtip high heels um, dressed, like, in vaudeville everything down. I'm like, Monika, how big was that check for you to let Diddy little dolphin-toothed ass do that shit to you? That's terrible. I know it's a scene from Harlem Nights, but still, like, come on now. I'm just saying. Oh my god. I'm like excited about this conversation. You know what? Y'all remember? Yo, she is black. Listen. Y'all remember Lloyd? Y'all remember motherfucking God sent me an angel. From the heavens above Send me an angel to hear my fucking heart From being in love Cause all I do ooh, 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 Is cry All I do is cry Send me an old guy I'm sorry I love Amanda Perez, bitch I miss that bitch I'm like, bitch, why you ain't only had one song, bitch? I'm sad about that. Yes. There's a song. I can't remember it. I can't remember all of it. But. It's like. It's like a Spanish song. But then they did it in English. No, if you book, no, no, if you book. Oh my God, yes, somebody come through. Yes, Frankie J. Oh my God, sugar, sugar, how you get so high? Sugar, sugar, how you get so high? Yes, that was my shit, yo. Bye. Yes, SWV. 
Ooh, I'm getting kind of tired of your broken promises. promises. Yes. Play it, please. <laughs> I'm so shady. <laughs> Okay, now you get it dirty. You dirty. I don't remember Heather Headley. Ashanti, foolish, yes. Does anybody remember All Saints? That song, never ever gonna. I can't, I don't remember all the words, but I just know it was called Never Ever. That was my jam, too. Damn. I'm dead, Soraya. I don't remember like the desert, Mr. Rain. Oh, Cisco incomplete. Yes, Tag Serrano. Yes, thank you so much. Yo, people keep playing fucking Adele. Yes, Sammy. <coughs> oh, wait, Dana Grace, what did I say? Oh my god. Yo, low key though, who like Britney Spears? Cause I used to like Britney Spears a lot. Like she fell off, but like I used to really fuck with Britney Spears like that stronger bitch. Like, oh my god. Lucky bitch. I love Britney. Spice Girls too. Yo, okay, this is random, but do y'all remember when Spice Girls had Spice Girls gum and you could find it at like a, like any like store that had like the candy machines out front of it, you can put your little quarters in? Bitch, yes, and they used to have the motherfucking pictures. Yo, my mom hated on me. Tell me one time my mom gave me like mad quarters and I bought mad gum and I just bought them for the, well, I, I love gum, but I also got them for the pictures because each one had a picture. I was trying to get all the pics and I got like mad gums and I ate them all. My mom was like, where's the gum? Because like she thought she was going to get some because she done gave me like 25 quarters. I'm like, no girl, like you don't understand. I was trying to get the, the stickers and the gum. I was trying to get it all. I was eating like, I was eating the gum like, like all the gum. I don't give a fuck, bitch. I was crazy when I was little. I was wildin'. I remember one time my grandpa gave me a hundred dollars, like randomly, and I like didn't even know how to act. I like literally as soon as my grandpa gave me the money, I went outside and I like told everybody in the neighborhood to come with me to the store. I was like, let's go get candy. I was like, we rich. Like I was like, let's go, niggas. Like, but I told everybody they could get one thing. Why niggas is coming up there with two hundred bottles of soda? Like niggas don't know how to act. And I was like fucking, I was like nine, nigga. But I, but my my rule was no old, no niggas older than me. I didn't like let no older niggas go other than like one of my big homies. I was like one of my big homies would come, but I only bought like the little niggas and the niggas that was my age. I was like nobody older than me. I don't really fuck with y'all like that. Y'all older than me. Like, <laughs> I was like I don't know. You ten? You probably got like mad hundreds of dollars. Like who knows how much money you got? Like I'm only nine. Like I can't pay for everybody. But we was trying to break it down up in John's Deli. Shout out to John's Deli in Connecticut, bitch. We was up in there in the candy, bitch. All up in it. Damn, candy used to be two cents, bitch. I remember that, bitch. I'm feeling old as fuck. You go into a store, you can't find no five cent candy no more, bitch. Everything's 10 cent or higher, ho. Or 15 cent. They got 15 cent candy now. I'd be like, what the fuck? Ugh, bitch, I never ate no Mary Janes. I'll throw them shits out. That's not my candy. I don't eat that. I don't eat motherfucking munchos. It's mashing on them. Like, I barely like Funyuns. I've had some Mexican candy. The shit is bomb. Some of it is bomb. I be having, I be eating this shit that's like pralines. It's like peanuts and like mad nougat and shit in a bar. I'm dead. We're talking about candy and shit now. I'm dead. I just wanted to come through and talk because Sydney had to wake up in like an hour. Like we, like I got home from work at like midnight. Bitch, can I tell you I'm so embarrassed. I broke a mirror at work. Uh, I felt so shitty about it. Like when I was cleaning it up, I was freaking out. Bitch, I watched Skeleton Key recently. <laughs> I shouldn't have done that. But when I broke that mirror, I was like, 
scared to look in it. I thought a bitch was gonna try to pop out of it, bitch. I'd be so scared sometimes. I'd be like, oh my god. I mean, I think I'm like superstitious on some other shit, but I was like cleaning up that mirror. I was like, bitch, just stay in there. <laughs> like, bitch, if you escape, go to another mirror. <laughs> We got like eight mirrors now, ho. That bitch could go somewhere else. I was so shook, but I gotta tell my boss. But it was like a little mirror, like, but it kinda like low key, like it's I didn't realize how much that mirror like blocked us like blocked some of the the view of the customers from our faces. And so I felt naked afterwards, but ugh, that's like another thing. I feel I wonder how much it would cost to buy a new little mirror. I feel like it wouldn't be that crazy. I feel like I'm a I'm going to offer to replace it. Also, I got a raise. I feel kind of sexy about it. Um, I asked for my raise. They gave it to me. And I got the earliest raise in the company. Uh, feeling sexy. They was like, we don't normally give raises until you've been here for one year. But the way that your pussy is set up, you could get a raise now. Because, bitch, you've been... But like you've been busting it like bitch. I make sure my numbers be matching the bosses. Okay. I don't slack on the job I make the money. So I'm feeling kind of good Feeling kind of great But I want more Okay, what's it called when you're not satisfied and you want more? <laughs> greed Caleb <laughs> It's called greed <laughs> Oh my god. I love the OC I'm about to watch the OC again from the beginning. Loki, can I tell y'all, I used to really love Gossip Girl, and then I watched it from the beginning, and then I started, and then I stopped and was like, this is just white nonsense. And I got really sad, because I was like, damn, like, what does that mean about all the other shows that I used to fucking like? And then I, I watched the OC, and then like, I don't know, Loki though, the OC is different to me, because I feel like I'm Ryan. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm Ryan Atwood. I feel like, you know, like, just all these white people be rich and like they whiling about dumbass rich people stuff and I'm just trying to fucking go to school just trying to live like that shit made me like fucking emotional my nigga but I feel like that's just like that's just like the unfortunate you know or rather the fucking disservices of white supremacy you know cause whiteness got you identifying with white cis men as main characters and shit for things that you're going through as a non-cis white man. And so then you're like, Mer. you know what I mean? Like, I feel like in ways, like, my empathy for the character Ryan Atwood was, like, very profound, but I feel like at the same time, the whole reason, like, the whole reason why they thought he could even blend in the neighborhood was because he was white. Like, a white man ain't gonna bring home a random black teenager you know what I mean I feel like in ways like trauma around housing and like being in foster care led me to like really like hone in on like abandoned characters characters that needed help but real life is not like tv and I feel like I was trying to tell Sydney I was like I feel like I have like like fucking media itis or something where like I've like literally ingested so much bullshit from TV that sometimes like I have a warped idea of like how real life should be because I feel like TV is so fake that like you really could get caught up thinking that like you like this is real or like this is this could be me you know what Ryan couldn't have stayed with, um, damn, you got me trying to remember this bitch's name. Teresa. Fucking Teresa. I disagree. And I also thought it was a weird storyline that, like, Ryan was the, was the son, was the father of, like, Teresa's child. I just didn't fuck with that ending. I thought it was kind of whack. Like, I felt I was angry they killed off Marissa because I feel like she had a worthwhile storyline. Like, she was fucked up. Her family was thieves. The bitch pretty much was Matilda without the powers. You know what I mean? And she had mad money. They should have shown her, like, becoming, like, a drug cartel person or some shit like that. They could have went deep with it. Because, you know, these rich white girls be doing all types of shit. They could have made Marissa cooler, but that's sexism for you. They let the white bitch be as interesting as 
they could, I guess. Like, she was not interesting at all as a character. I was annoyed by Marissa. I felt like their love story was very Romeo and Juliet, like, bad timing. Like, every time they was good, it lasted two episodes, and then they was back to fighting. Like, I don't think they ever, like, were okay enough and had a relationship. Like, I feel like they constantly had a misconnection where it was like one day, you know, her mom is tripping or Ryan's tripping or she's tripping or she fucking a new nigga. It's just like, damn, it's like I was caught up in it. But now in retrospect, it's like, I guess that's melodrama for you. I don't know. It just seemed riveting at the time. So did Gossip Girl, though. But I feel like that was, like, the beginning of, like, media culture where people were, like, really, like, wilding with the text. But, like, low-key Gossip Girl had me scared to go to New York. I was like, what if I look scraggly? I don't want no one to take pictures of me and be, like, spotted. This bitch looking a fucking mess. <laughs> like, oh, my God. <laughs> but I low-key kind of, like, loved love the idea of like people like going on Gossip Girl and finding out where people are at. I'm like, that's kind of cool. But low key as the seasons went on, I just thought it was hilarious how they had bitches that were like fans, like following them. I would be like, really? Like, I'd be like, you really care about Serena like that? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I always in my heart wanted to be a Serena, but I feel like I'm a mix of Serena and Blair. But if I'm, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm Dorota. <laughs> I'm that bitch in the back, just eating good, living good, but I still got to work. You know, I'm still working, but they taking care of me. I'm good. You know what I mean? I got a phone. You know what I mean? I got a boo. You know, I'm pregnant and shit. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how y'all fuck with that, that East Coast weather. I can't do it. I'm so happy I moved to the South. Like, I feel like, you know, the first, my first trip out here, it was just very isolating. Because, as I said, I had two white um, women that were my roommates. And, like, we didn't really know each other that well. And I feel like I low-key was, like, trying to, like, get really close with one of my roommates. Because I was like, that other bitch seems kind of strange. And the other bitch, like, one of them was, like, a fucking art hoe. And the other one was like a fucking, she was a motherfucker. If I'm being 100%, that bitch was a drug lord. Like, I feel like, I feel like I should do a story time about my drug lord roommate because she was kind of extra. Like, I didn't really like her that much. And she was like scraggly with the rent. Like, we were supposed to be splitting the rent three ways, but she would always be like to the coin. You know what I mean? Like, I think we would always throw in a little extra. I would throw in a little extra just to, like, I don't know. I think I would just always throw in a little extra on the rent just because, you know what I mean? I feel like it just was nice to know that, like, motherfuckers wasn't tripping about a damn dollar or five dollars. Like, we could just, you know, pay our rent, I guess. But um, she would just never, like, she would never pay a little extra for anything. Like, we would try to be paying our bills and shit together. She would never, like, it just seemed like the, the bill, like, let's say the bill was, like, $70 or some shit, and, like, we, I'm trying to, like, split it my mind three different ways. I'm like, hold up, like, 20, uh, like, she would find out what it was exactly to the coin, and folks would just, like, throw in, like, 40 bucks or whatever, like, or $25 or whatever the fuck. Like, people would try, would try in, like, $25 or something like that. And she would just be like, oh, no. Like, I owe you, like, 58 cents, like, and $23. So, that's how this hoe was living. But anyways, bitch, where's my lighter? Like, can I live? I'm like, did Sydney take it? I don't remember. Ugh. Does anyone know? Like, I feel like you might have remembered. But, like, uh, Jesus. But, um, oh, yeah, maybe my thighs? No. Mer. Don't be sorry, but I'm just, like, I mean, I'm looking. I don't, I feel like, I don't think she ever gave it to me. Oh, she did. Yikes. <laughs> Thank you. I need to get a lighter lanyard. I need to get a motherfucking lanyard so bad. I need to, like, just get, like, one of the, like, just have, you know how people be having their lighters, like, around their neck and shit, around the keychain? I need to get that. <coughs> but, um, 
was I fucking saying to you? Um, yeah, but like, but my first time in New Orleans, like, I was just like, just living a very wild life. Like, I feel like I was like, first, un I was like understanding what it means to like work full time. Like, I did not know what it meant to work full time. I was working part time like a mug. I was working like 20 hours a week, my nigga. Um, and then when I went to, when I moved to New Orleans, like, I was working every day, 4 to 4 p.m. to midnight, Monday through Friday, or rather Monday through Saturday, I had Sunday off. I'm lying. I had Friday off. So I worked every day. So fucking Saturday to fucking Thursday. Does that make sense? Yeah. Saturday to Thursday or Sunday to Thursday. Whatever. I have one day off. I'm trying to like think about it. I'm just like, I'm thinking about it too much. But um, I didn't have a lot of time off. So it's like I didn't really have enough time to spend any of my money so I was like trying to save my money up but like there was really nothing to save my money up for low key at the time because I really didn't know what I wanted to do I was just more so focused on like no longer being in a re abusive actual relationship I was kind of just like feeling relieved feeling like for the first time kind of like very on my own but in this way that kind of felt like really bomb like I was kind of just like word like I felt like J-Lo and enough without all the killing you know what I mean there was no death but I felt really strong. And then, you know, I had a situation where I got robbed at gunpoint. And I started feeling like niggas was fake around me. Found out niggas was fake around me. Went back to New Orleans. And this time when I went back there, it was another situation where, like, I wanted to go back because I felt like I left because... I was just, I, I felt burnt out from working that much. Like, I was like, damn, I, like, I didn't have no time off to my life. And then, um, on top of it, it's like all the motherfuckers I was around was, like, just giving me bad vibes. Like, I was just feeling like, I don't even think y'all fuck with me. And then I'm like, I certainly don't fuck with you because y'all don't fuck with me and I feel it. So, I was more so getting in tune with my emotional health, I guess, or, like, my fucking my aura and shit like that because I was like I was feeling people's auras around me and I was like ooh your aura is dirty as fuck bitch you need to cleanse your shit like get the fuck away from me like I was just feeling like people like was just festering with like hate and just like fucking just evilness real talk and so I was like I don't fuck with that shit so when I came back I was like trying to find like new people new connections and I got caught up in some fucking fake magical negro ass healer ass niggas and I feel like that's the other thing is like I went from like kicking it whole hardcore like white people and like light skins who are like OD fucking anti-black and colorist as fuck and just like wayward ass like black cis dudes who are just like hella motherfucking respectable like I feel like in ways like all the black men that ever like are into me or want to date me or want to fuck me or whatever they all are like on some like fucking exotical like fetishizing ass shit and it's to the point where I feel so disconnected from fucking with like men of color because I'm like nigga is you looking for a trophy or are you looking for some real shit like is you just trying to fuck or you want to talk about some real deep shit like what's popping like what's going on because I feel like so many instances where I'm like in the presence of like men of color and I'm just like girl like why do you want to touch my hair girl why do you want to know about my my fucking familial history like is we fucking is we making a baby like is we talking about motherfucking hereditary um coincidences and shit? like what the fuck I don't even fucking know like it just it seems so fucking fake it's just like girl it just makes me feel like you don't see me as a full person you see me as the perhaps contributor to you could like continuing your DNA legacy like that's what it seems like it seems like that's what you're focused on is whether or not I am like quote-unquote good enough or exotic enough to carry on your lineage of babies that you don't want to be looking like you who is black and or brown skin or more melanated than me and I'm just like yuck just very strange but um as I was saying, I got caught up with the healers. I got caught up with niggas trying to tell me that they was like, like people that predicated healing over fucking people. People that was just like, you know what? Like, I can't deal with the fact that like you need housing right now. So fuck you. I'm gonna go dip out and leave and not help you. Um, People call it New Orleans. 
like lens, not not leans, not lens. But I'm only someone that just started living here five years ago. Who knows what the fuck I know. Let these niggas tell it. I fucking be claiming New Orleans. I claim I know every fucking thing. Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry. I'm still blown about this Beyonce shit. I'm so blown. Like, I'll never not be blown by it. Because it's just like... <sighs> wow. It has been five years. About, it's, it's six years in... November. So, that's exciting. I don't know. I'm just feeling kind of cray-cray about everything because I just feel like... I feel like I'm nigga Domus. Like, real talk. Like, I feel like I'm gonna pat my pussy to the sky. Like, I'm fucking nigga Domus. I be seeing shit. I be knowing shit. And I be saying shit. And niggas be trying to stop me because they can't take it. They can't take her. And that's fine. That's just fine with me. You don't gotta take me. That's okay. I'll take me. I'll hold me. I'll give me space. I'll give me love and support. That's what I'll do. But anyways, I'm about to retire to my boudoir. I love y'all. I hope y'all are blessed. Stay in the light. Don't fuck around in the dark.